board. So we're looking at homework questions from section 3.8. And I need something like Desmos. Desmos has been doing a good job lately. So I'm using that instead of GeoGebra. Can it handle the lemniscate? Two times x squared plus y squared. All, oops, all squared equals 25 times x squared plus y. Ooh, that's cool. Goggles. <laughs> These curves, they're so much fun. Um, hmm, did I do that wrong? It does not look like a limb escape. I think I typed it right. Uh, oh, there's a minus, yes, okay. Otherwise I got a circle there, thank you. Ooh, that was weird. Check that out, nice. Okay, so there's the lemniscate uh, right there. It's this like infinity type shape, not cute. Um, and we wanna know what's going on at the point three, negative three, oops, wrong screen over here. So three, not negative three, negative one. So at that point right there, can we find the tangent line? Let's do it. All right, let's see if I can copy that correctly. I lost my magic pen, there it is. So we've got two times x squared plus y squared squared equals 25 times x squared plus y squared minus, I did it again. Ooh, that was interesting. Right, this is number six, homework 3.8. So we have to differentiate on both sides. So I need the derivative with respect to x of this whole side. Equals the derivative with respect to x of this whole side. All right, I got the minus right that time. I think I got it right. All right, so the two out front here, that just, we can just pull that out because it's a constant multiple. And then here I have uh, an outer function, which is a square and an inner function, which is this x squared plus y squared. So I have the chain rule going on out here. So first I have to take the derivative of the outer function, the square. So that says two times parentheses to the first power, right? So I apply the power rule to the parentheses, then I take the derivative of the inner function. So the inner part, the derivative of x squared with respect to x is just 2x. Now y is a function of x, that's the whole implicit uh, function idea. And so, and the chain rule says, anytime you take the derivative of something that's not just an x, you have to multiply by the, the derivative of that inner function. So y is the inner function. So then next I get plus 2y, times y prime. So don't forget, anytime there's a y, you have to take the derivative, but then multiply by y prime for that part right there. So I've got the derivative of the outer function times the, uh, sorry. Oh shit, I totally screwed that up. Eek. Chain rule says leave the inner function alone and then multiply by its derivative. So I was about to speak the chain rule and realize I messed it up. So chain rule says first leave that alone, then multiply by its derivative. So this is the two x plus two y times y prime. That's better. So that's the derivative of the left side. On the right side, 25 is a constant, so that just pops out. And then we have the derivative of this right here, which is just two x minus two y and since y is a function of x, the chain rule says you better multiply by its derivative. 
So that's my first run through this. And then we clean it up. So let's see. Um, we got y prime. So then we have to condense the y primes to get the slope. Uh, alternative, I guess, we only care about one particular point. So if I had a whole bunch of, uh, of slopes to find, I would solve for y prime next. But I'm going to do an easier route instead. And then I would have y prime uh, would then be a function of x and y, because I'm going to have x and y is mixed up in there. But I think an easier route here would be to first plug in the point 3 comma negative 1. And then this is going to be a lot easier to solve y prime for. Uh, yeah, So I think that's the easier route than the general algebra. But I can certainly go through the general algebra if you guys want to. So I'm going to do this, plug in that point into the above. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit, I think. Multiply the two in here. Yeah, so I'm just going to write it as four times x is three squared plus y is negative one squared times two times x, which is three, plus two times y, which is negative one times y prime and close parentheses, and that's equal to, uh, let's see, I can factor this two out maybe and say that's 50 times x, which is three minus two times negative one times y prime. Ooh, that was close, just enough room there. Ooh, no, I factored that two out, didn't I? I guess I should have done that in a different step. I was careless. Okay. That looks all right. So cleaning this up, what do we get here? We get uh, 9 plus 1 is 10 times 4 is 40 times parentheses. And then here I have, what, 6 minus 2y prime. On the other side, we've got that 50 times 3 plus y prime. And so we need to get the y primes together. So we might as well distribute these back through. So 4 times 6 is 24. So that's 240 minus 80 y prime equals 150 plus 50 y prime. And then let's get the y primes together. Let's pull them over to this side. So plus 80y prime over here. And then we'll subtract the 150 over. What is the net result? 90 is equal to, uh, what's that? Eight and five on a good day is what, 13? So that's 130 y prime. So y prime is equal to 90 over 130 or 9 thirteenths. So I think that's the slope at three negative one. So I need to plug in and check. So here, if I go y minus y1 equals m 9 thirteenths times x minus x1. Yes, got it. That looks like the tangent right there. So that looks pretty good. So again, I want you to get in the habit of before you hit submit my answer, see if you actually have the right answer by checking yourself. Because on the test, that's all you got, just you. So the slope definitely for mine seems to be 9 thirteenths. And again, back to this right here, it was easier to just plug in x and y and then solve for y prime. Uh, otherwise, we had a whole bunch of algebra to do to solve for y prime in general, and we get y prime as a function of x and y. But then we could plug in any points we wanted to 
uh, that are on the curve, right? But that's the catch. We got to find points on the curve, which is a whole nother uh, trick. And we were happy to be given one there. All right, what was next? Number seven. Yeah. So, next question. Um, ooh, this was not supposed to be in here because we haven't covered E yet. Darn it. Okay, I'm going to come back to that one. And then nine. Okay, we can do nine. All right, so sorry, I meant to pull all the E questions out and I missed one because E isn't covered till the next section. Uh, but I'm sure that's something you could look up pretty easy. So I'm going to copy this one. It's a wee bit more complicated, I think, maybe sort of. Okay, so, uh, and again, it's a good idea to graph these because we have calculators that can graph them. Um, back when I was taking calculus, they didn't really exist yet. <clears throat> so, I'm kind of curious about that. Let's bring up a new Desmos screen. Come here, Desmos. There we go. Desmos can handle this one. Y divided by X plus six Y. And this one we could actually solve for Y, I believe, equals X raised to the fifth plus eight. Ooh, Desmos is struggling. Look at that. Kind of got something going on there. That's cool. And this claims we have the point. Let's see if that's true. Just double check. I'm sure it is true. Somebody wrote this question. I didn't write this one. Nine divided by negative 53. Yeah, that's on there. But look at Desmos is really having a hard time graphing that. Imagine GeoGebra would have equal trouble graphing it. So we want to find the slope uh, through there. All right, so I thought this might be easy to solve for y. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's give it a try anyway. Uh, so we're supposed to use implicit differentiation, right? Which means take the derivative with respect to x of what we see here. And remember, implicit differentiation means that we know that y is a function of x, even though we might not have that function. And so anytime we take a derivative where there's a y, we have to remember to multiply whatever by y prime. I will itch my curiosity later by solving this for y, but it looks beautiful. All right, so uh, on this side, I have to apply the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says take the derivative of the top first. Well, the derivative of y with respect to x is, right, remember y prime is dy dx. It's supposed to be the y right there. So I'm just going to say the derivative of the top is y prime, and then multiply by the bottom x plus 6y and then subtract the top times the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x with respect to x is 1. The derivative of 6y, well, the slope of that is just 6. But then I have to remember to multiply by y prime. Right there. And then all divided by x plus 6y squared. So don't forget that in the quotient rule. Other side's pretty straightforward. The derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth, and the derivative of 8 is 0, so I'm not even going to write that. Uh, so then from here, we could solve for y prime in general and get a function of x and y for any point, or we could just plug in this x and y value and then solve for y prime. So I'm going to take, that's the easier route usually. So we're just going to plug in x equals 1 and y equals negative 9 over 53, and then we'll solve for y prime. So again, x equals 1 here, y equals 9 over negative 53, or whatever your values are. So y prime is it's not equal to, I'm not there yet. 
x is 1 plus 6 times negative 9 over 53, which probably ain't going to clean up much, minus y, which is negative 9 over 53, times 1 plus 6y prime, nothing to do there, all divided by 1 plus 6 times negative 9 over 53 squared, and that's equal to 5 times 1 squared, or 1 to the fourth, sorry. All right, so cleaning this up a little bit. Um, here we can clean that up. Let's do that off to the side. So 6 times 9 is 54. 1 is 53 over 53, right? So that's my 1. And then it's going to be minus, because I have a positive times a negative, 54 over 53, which is negative 1 over 53. So I've got y prime times negative 1 over 53. And then here we have minus a negative, right? So that's going to be plus, and then we're going to distribute that. So that's going to give me 9 over 53 plus 6 times 9 is 54 over 53 y prime all over. So let's see down here, I just did that same calculation and now I'm squaring it. So that's going to give me uh, 1 over 53 squared in the bottom, right? Because this calculation is the same as that calculation, which is this right here. Okay. And then on the other side, we've got 5. Oops, sorry, let's switch color. Consolidating things, we have um, y prime, y prime, so negative 1 over 53 plus 54 over 53 is 53 over 53. So then I just get uh, y prime in the top plus 9 over 53. And then I guess we will multiply this over to the other side. So then I'm going to get 5 times 1 over 53 squared. I'm going to subtract that over. So y prime is the result of 5 over 53 squared minus 9 over 53. And I just want an exact answer or a decimal answer for the slope. And I'm going to try to check it too. Um, it wants an exact answer. OK, so we can clean that up just a little bit. And Desmos uh, does, I think, do fractions for us, but we can do this one ourselves. So common denominator would be 53 squared. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 53. So I need to know what is 5 minus 9 times 53. Five minus nine times fifty-three is negative four hundred and twenty four hundred and seventy-two. So that's my numerator. Negative four seventy-two divided by whatever fifty-three squared is. So I'm gonna give us fifty-three squared. So that I believe is my slope. So I'm gonna say here, let m equal that. Because I want to see if the tangent line looks like the slope through that funky piece of function there. Um, so I believe this is probably continuous, but Desmos is having a heck of a time drawing it. Uh, and my belief is about the way uh, these computer systems graph these functions right here. They pick a whole bunch of x values, they plug them into this one at a time, and then they use some another algebra system that tries to solve for y to get the y value, and it just plots a ton of points um, by plugging an x, solving for y getting the point. Plug in an x, solving for y. It just does that really fast because it's a computer. So y minus y1, so that'd be plus 9 over 53. And I hope you guys are doing this tangent line check. 
on your own when you're doing your homework. Otherwise, the test is going to be very painful. One. And that looks like it's sitting right on top tangent there. And again, yeah, I can see a little red in the background there. So there's my line. If I turn it off, we can see the function behind it. That looks pretty darn tangent right there. So I think I got the right slope. The slope is mine, negative 472 divided by 53 squared. Uh, and it says I can enter a mathematical expression. So it should accept that. Let's submit one for once. Cool. We did it. Man, that was a workout. Okay, that was number seven. No, that was number nine. I said I'd come back to number seven. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next section, and then I will come back. So let me put this in my notebook to come back to. Let's blow that up. Ooh, that was interesting. Screenshot it. Okay, and new page. All right, so we'll hopefully remember to come back to this. And I'm going to end this recording and start a new.